he would take that blood and he would sprinkle it seven times on that altar. Why seven? Well, Jesus Christ, he bled in seven places and on that scapegoat, which Jesus Christ was fulfilling our ransom. They would take that scapegoat and they would push on him and they would yell at him and they would pull out the hair of that goat and say, take and go, take and go. They were pushing him through the wilderness so he would get to that cliff. And what happened with Jesus Christ? He was taken outside the city. He was taken out to a cliff called Golgotha. And what else happened to them? They beat him. They pushed on him. They abused him. And what else? They even pulled out the hair of his beard. We welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. Welcome to Getting Ready. Thank you again for joining us this week. And this is such a wonderful time of year for us as Christians and the people of God. And before we get into this week's teaching and talking about the highest and holiest day to God on His calendar, let's pray first, okay? Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord. And I pray, God, for for us here in the studio, God. And I pray, God, for our friends, God. And I pray, God, that your anointing the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be upon them and upon us. And God, I pray for revelation, God. I pray, God, that we see you in another way today, a wonderful, wonderful way. And expound, God. Expound our minds, Lord. Help us, God, to understand you more and more and to see how important the time of year that we are now in really is. We thank you for this opportunity. Holy Spirit, be with us. Be with us here and be with our friends. And we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you agree with me, say amen. Amen. Now, I told you at the very beginning that we're going to be talking about the highest and the holiest, most solemn day to God on His calendar. You know, here in the Western world, we go by a Gregorian calendar. And then in Israel, they go by it's God's calendar, the Jewish calendar. So it's very important that we follow God's calendar also in according, you know, in, a, in addition to our Gregorian calendar. And why is that important? Well, it's important because we as the people of God need to be making sure that we're making our appointments and showing up at God's appointed times. It's because believe me, you know, when I first started finding out that, hey, wait a minute, there's these wonderful holidays that God has set up for His people. And now that I'm a Christian and I pray that you are a Christian, if you're not, at any time of this broadcast, just repent and give your life to the Lord. We're in the time of repentance. We're in the time of repentance and, and on God's calendar. And we're coming to, the, if you will, the crescendo of all days of repenting before the Lord. So let's talk about a few things. Of course we know, and we've talked about it many times on this broadcast and through this ministry. It's Ephesians 2. Let's go there real quick. Ephesians 2, 12 through 16, and that's in the Amplified Translation, and it reads, Remember that you were at that time separated, living apart from Christ, excluded from all part in Him, utterly estranged and outlawed from the rights of Israel as a nation, and strangers with no share in the sacred compacts of the Messianic promise, with no knowledge of or right in God's agreements, His covenants. And you had no hope, no promise. You were in the world without God. But now, in Christ Jesus you who once were so far away through by in the blood of, of Christ have been brought near. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. Now this, this is the part that you really need to listen to. Because of Jesus Christ, we now are grafted in by the covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ. We now have, as we just read, we now have a share of the sacred compacts 
the promises that was given to Israel. We've been grafted into her and it reads, He has made us both Jew and Gentile one body and has broken down, destroyed, and abolished the hostile divining wall between us by abolishing in his own crucified flesh the enmity caused by the law with its decrees and ordinances which is annulled that he from the two might create in himself one new man, one new quality of humanity out of the two, so making peace. And he designed to reconcile to God both Jew and Gentile united in a single body by means of his cross. So we have been grafted in to Israel because of Jesus Christ and because he is Jewish and because he was the body, the one that would be used for Jew and Gentile to be grafted into, we now not only get to observe and have wonderful times as Christians in our holidays, but we are also, according to the Word of God, supposed to be showing up for God's holidays, which He gave to Israel because He, Jesus Christ, in His body created one new man, both Jew and Gentile, united. And we're supposed to be united, and we're supposed to be following the holidays also. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about the highest and the holiest day. And one of the feasts, one of the celebrations that God has put on his calendar. And it's called Yom Kippur. Now I know if you're anything the way I was, I would see Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, and these different things on my calendars always have for years. Did not know what they meant. Did not know as a believer, as a born again Christian, these were actually my holidays now too. And we are now in Yom Kippur. Just look on your calendar and you will be able to see when Yom Kippur begins and ends. It will last from sundown to the next day sundown. So just look on your calendar and you will be able to see at the time of this taping that we are within that time. So you may be saying, Sister Jamie, okay, tell me about Yom Kippur then. If it's part of, of my benefit package of being a born-again believer and follower of Jesus Christ, I want to know what I've got. I don't blame you. I do too. So let's talk about it. Okay, let's go to... Let's just talk about Yom Kippur. Let me just say this. Yom Kippur, it means, in Hebrew, the word, it's a noun, and it means copper. It's C-O-P-E-R, Kippur. And it means ransom or hush money. It also means to carry away, to pardon, and to take away. And again, this is God's highest and His holiest day on His calendar to God. So, why is that important to us? You may say, well, that's an Old Testament thing. Yom Kippur is the day that you see in your Bible, and it's also known as the Day of Atonement. And let's talk about some things that happen on the Day of Atonement and how Jesus Christ actually fulfilled the feast of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when he was here on earth. Yes, just like he's fulfilled Passover, just like the baptism of the Holy Spirit came at the Feast of Pentecost. He also fulfilled the Feast of the Day of Atonement. And I'll show you here. Now, let's go to Leviticus 23. Le Leviticus 23. And let's see here. Let's read in verse... Let's read in verse 31. Now, if you look at Leviticus 23 and you go through the verses of verses 26 through 32, you're going to see that it talks about that these are the feasts of the Lord. And right here in this paragraph in your Bible, it's going to talk about it in detail. Small detail, but it is about detail about the Day of Atonement, which is also called Yom Kippur. And it says in verse 31 something very important. And let's look at that. And it says, you shall, okay, first, let's see here. Verse 31, you shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. So, you know, when the Bible says that you're supposed to be doing this as a lasting ordinance, that means you're supposed to continue doing it. It didn't say in the Word of God to ever stop doing these celebrations. Jesus has fulfilled some of them, but he, he took the hard part out of it. And what was left is the great part that you get to celebrate. He fulfilled them. And so he also fulfilled Yom Kippur. But here's the thing is that we're supposed to, as the church, being grafted into now Israel and being a part of the Messianic covenant that they have with God, we have it now too, we're supposed to be doing it because it says it's to be in a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. So that means even now, in the year that you're living in, you're supposed to be celebrating it too. But yet, it is the most solemn of all feasts. So let's keep looking at Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. 
let's go to Leviticus 16. And let's see here, Leviticus 16, <clears throat> and it reads, this is in verses 5 through 8, and it says, Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron at the time was the high priest. He was the first high priest, actually, that God put in place. And so God is telling him how to do Yom Kippur, how to do the Day of Atonement. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take the two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. Verse 8. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people to the wilderness of Azel, which means scapegoat. Now what is so important about this is that during the whole procedure, if you will, of the Day of Atonement, the high priest has some major responsibilities. He is the one who orchestrates the entire day. The Day of Atonement is the one day when one man could go behind the veil and be in the Holy of Holies. See, the, the temple was, or tabernacle, in the very beginning, it had the outer court, and then the inner court, which was called the holy place, and then the, the very holy place, which was called the holy of holies. And that was just one day a year that one person, then it had to be the high priest, he would be able to go behind that veil and go into the holy of holies where God's presence was on the Ark of the Covenant. And he would bring an, an atonement for all the sins of the nation. So... This was a very important day. It was a huge day and still is a day of repentance for God's people. So that was how God told Aaron, the very first high priest, how he wanted him to do um, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So now let's look at something else here. Let's go to let's go to Exodus, excuse me, Exodus chapter 12, verses 3 and 5. Exodus 12. Let's see here. Exodus 12, verses 3 and 5. And it says, Tell all the congregation of Israel, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb or kid, according to the size of the family, of which he is the father, a lamb or kid for each house. Verse 5. Your lamb or kid shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or the goats. Now, why is that important? It's very important because in Exodus 12, God is telling, He is telling the Israelites that this is what I want you to do on Passover. You may say, well, Sister Jamie, I thought we was going to be talking about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. We are. But see, when through Passover, Jesus Christ was fulfilling Passover and He was also fulfilling the other feast called the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. So, when God was talking to them, tell the congregation of Israel, this is how I want you to conduct things at the Feast of Passover. He says here, and let's look at that again. On the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb or a kid, which is a goat, right? Now, we know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, but did you know that He is also the goat of God? Yes, that's right. I may sound a little strange. Hang on with me and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. God is saying here to the Israelites, He says to bring a lamb or a kid according to the size of your family. He goes on to verse 5 and He says, Your lamb or kid shall be without blemish. A male of the first year you shall take it up from the sheep or the goats. So at Passover, not only was Jesus the lamb, but he was also fulfilling a feast where there were these goats that were involved, and that is at the Day of Atonement. Praise the Lord. Now let's just talk about some of the details of some of the things that happens at the Day of Atonement. And why we need to do that is because you're going to clearly see how Jesus was fulfilling two feasts through what he did through Passover. Now, 
what would happen is the high priest, he would leave his family for seven days. The reason he would leave his family is because he had to be completely pure in his mind, completely pure in his thoughts and in every way about him. He could not even have sexual relations with his wife because that would have been a sexual thoughts he was having. Because remember, he had one day where he had to go into the Holy of Holies and he had to be completely clean, completely pure, not even having bad thoughts. So they had the high priest leave his family for seven days. And he would take those seven days and he would saturate himself with the word. He would go over exactly the different things he had to do on the Day of Atonement. And during the night, the night before the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, he had to stay up all night long right? And these younger men who were, if you will, priests in training, they would stay up with the high priest and read him the scriptures and keep saturating him with the word and, and the things of his responsibilities that God had told uh, Aaron and told Moses on how to conduct the day of atonement, the highest and holiest day to God. And if he started falling, see he had to stay up. He had to keep himself pure because if he had a bad dream or an evil dream or any kind of dream that was not of the Lord, then he would not be able to fulfill his duties that next day as the Day of Atonement. Now, what's the big deal? You know, you may be thinking, well, what is so important is that even in, we find in Exodus uh, 28, even his garment was made to have pomegranates and bales sewn in the very hem and the bottom of his cloak. And why is that? Because if he was not pure, completely pure before God, or even had wrong thoughts, and he would go into that Holy of Holies, those bales would have to ring while he was walking. They would tie a rope around his legs so that when he would walk in and go through the temple and go through the, the things that he needed to do and then finally get to the behind the veil and the Holy of Holies, if he was wrong with God, he would have died. And there was no one else who would have been able except for he, he would have on the Day of Atonement. He would have one person on standby, if you will, in case he would die and just drop dead in the Holy of Holies because he was not pure and clean in his mind and in his will. So they would have these bells. And it says in Exodus 28, uh, verse 33 and 34, And you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet stuff around about its skirts with gold bells between them. A gold bell and a pomegranate, a gold bell and a pomegranate, round about on the skirts of the robe. So that's what the high priest was wearing. And it was so that you could hear him going through the temple as he was going through the duties. And at any time they didn't hear those bells ring, they knew he had dropped dead. And nobody else could go in there, so they had to pull him out of the temple with that rope. So, Jesus Christ now is our high priest. That's what the Bible tells us. He is our high priest. And it also said that we have learned that the high priest had to stay up all night long the day before he would perform everything for the Day of Atonement. And that there was men with him, if you will, priests in training, that were with him to keep him up all night. So Jesus is in the garden, right? He's, he has just went through Passover, and he then takes his disciples to Gethsemane. And then they are asked by him, you know, Go and pray. Go and pray. And so he's he's giving his pouring out everything in him and 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 it's, you know, this is it. This is the big day. This is Passover and he's also going to be fulfilling the day of atonement through all the actions and the things that's going to be happening to follow right now. And what happens to his priests in training because Revelation tells us that we are kings and priests and once he fulfills Passover and once he fulfills that day of atonement then we are allowed because of his blood we are then grafted in and who is his priest in training what's well, his disciples and what does Jesus say to them he says could you not tarry not one hour what he was doing it was the same thing that the high priest in before him would do every year at the day of atonement he would have these priests in training that would stay up with him all night to keep his mind pure, to, to help him get through that night. And that is what Jesus' disciples were supposed to be doing too. And this, is, this is wonderful, the things that you're going to learn. Keep listening to this broadcast. It's valuable. It's valuable to you as a Christian. Now, when the high priest on the Day of Atonement would come, a bull 
or a heifer would be brought to him and he would lay his hands upon it and that would have to be sacrificed. That, that animal was used to atone, um, to take the place of the high priest and his family's sins. Of course, Jesus Christ died so that God's family, us, our sins would be atoned for. They would be taken care of. And all we'd have to do is repent and come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and turn away from those sins. And then we would be right with God again. The other two things that we have read about, the other two animals were two goats, right? Two goats were chosen at the Day of Atonement. And one was going to be chosen for to be sacrificed for the Lord. The other goat would be chose, chosen to be the Azel, the scapegoat. And they would take these lots and one lot would say on it for the Lord. The other lot is that what they would use uh, at that time in the temple uh, to just kind of cast them. And when they would cast them, they would know which goat would be assigned to the sacrifice. The other lot would say across it, a zeal, which meant scapegoat or ransom. They'd cast those lots and they would assign each one of those male goats to either be the sacrifice for the Lord or the Azale, the scapegoat. And whichever goat was chosen, the one that was chosen to be the sacrifice to the Lord, they would take this long crimson red wool-like um, if you will, just rope, and they would take it and they would wrap it around the neck of the one that was for the Lord, and that's the one that will be sacrificed. Then they would take the rest of that crimson red rope and they would tie it around the horns of the one that was going to be the scapegoat. And so the, the one that was chosen for it to be a sacrifice to the Lord, it was sacrificed. The, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, he goes, excuse me, he goes into the temple, he goes in and he sprinkles blood, he comes back out, and then he gets the blood of the goat and the bull, and it's mixed together, and then he takes that blood and he goes into the temple, and he goes through the sections of the temple until he finally comes to the Holy of Holies. And then he goes behind that veil where the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant is, where God's presence rested, and he would take that blood and he would sprinkle it seven times on that altar. Why seven? Well, Jesus Christ, he bled in seven places on his body. On his forehead, on two wrists, on two feet, and through his side. That equals seven. That high priest would take that blood and he would back out of the Holy of Holies and all the way out the temple doors. Why did he not turn around? Because it is always taught in Israel that you God never turns his back on you, so you never turn your back on him. So that high priest would back up. And then he would go out. And while all of the people of Israel would be out in the temple, they'd be on their faces, repenting before God, getting themselves clean, repenting for their sins and their neighbor's sins, and asking God to forgive them and giving forgiveness to people who had harmed them. That high priest would lay his hands upon that scapegoat with the one with the crimson around his horns and he would lay his hands upon them and he would declare all the sins of the nation on this goat. This goat would be led out into the wilderness and it would have to go to a high cliff and be pushed off that cliff. Now what would happen, and it was supernatural, those, the, the the crimson red wool rope that was tied around his horns, it and part of it was taken and it was put around the temple doors. And when that sacrifice of the scapegoat was pushed off that cliff and it had to die at that cliff, then supernaturally that crimson red wool rope would turn to white at the temple and they would know that the scapegoat, the sacrifice for the sins of the nation would have been atoned for. Now, you may think, well, how does this tie into Jesus? Well, Jesus was the goat that was, he was the scapegoat for us. He was our ransom. Let's go really quickly to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, and it's real important that we read this because in Hebrews chapter 9, it talks to us fairly clearly about Jesus. When 
Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, have obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who were ceremonially unclean, sanctifying them that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, in verse 15, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Now, what does Yom Kippur mean? Yom Kippur means ransom. And he's talking about here that Jesus Christ is the high priest. Jesus Christ is the one who was the one who set us free. And what does Isaiah tell us? Isaiah 118, through your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are crimson as red, they shall be like wool. Wool is on a lamb. So he was the he was the lamb. He was the goat in the Yom Kippur, and he was our scapegoat. He is our Azazel. He is our one that fulfilled Yom Kippur. And what did John the Baptist say? He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away. Takes away is what Yom Kippur means. He takes away the sins of the world. So John the Baptist was prophesying he is a lamb, and yet he was the goat of Yom Kippur. So what do you do as a Christian? On the day of Yom Kippur, you need to fast, you need to pray, and you need to repent. And so make sure you're doing that through this season. Get yourself right with God because this is the highest, this is the holiest day to God. Make sure you're doing what God is wanting us to do as His people. You keep getting ready because Jesus is coming. Make sure you're clean through this season of Yom Kippur. Thank you so much for watching Getting Ready Today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayer and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise report. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming. Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? We have property in Leland, North Carolina. And so we are coming to that area. We are building God campuses to build up and train the last day soldiers in these last days for the kingdom of God. We are so excited about it. If God's calling you to be a part of this, contact the ministry. Let us know. Hallelujah. We bless you, Wilmington, North Carolina area. We are so excited that the ministry is coming there. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Have you heard?